a well, very warm welcome to you all. Um, my apologies, we're just slightly, slightly ruffled because uh, we, we've had a little bit of a problem with the, the streaming of the service. We're just trying to resolve that, but we'll certainly carry on uh, as we are live here together and hope very much that those who are watching from home will manage to, to join us shortly. You're very welcome, for here we come to be, well, to be a fellowship together, I hope, to be here for and with one another, but also by the grace of God, joined with, with him. For he is present in spirit, in truth, and we are invited, asked, called to worship in spirit and truth. And so let us worship God together. We're going to begin with a song that just picks up some of Jesus's most basic teaching. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Let's stand to sing. going to come together in prayer. There is this wonderful bit in the letter to the Hebrews where there is a, a remembrance of, of people of faith who have gone before us. All the way back to Abraham, the list in Hebrews goes, but it mentions a number of people who perhaps won't trip off our tongues, and they maybe wouldn't even have tripped off the tongues of those to whom that letter was first written. And then, of course, the name, the name calling, the roll call, as it were, has gone on and on. And you and I are indeed invited, as this text says, to ourselves run this race, holding on to the knowledge that there is a cloud of witnesses, so many who have gone before us, who have gone this race before us. Let's pray together. And so we are joined, Lord, by your grace, with a company in heaven and on earth, with the knowledge of those whom we no longer see, as well as those 
who are absolutely round about us now. We are joined by your love, which is eternal. By your grace, which makes us whole. And in the Spirit, who leads us into life. So you have spoken from the beginning, and most particularly in the coming of Jesus Christ, your Son, who called people to follow him, to see in him the way and the truth and the life, that we might come to the Father, that we might be guided by God through all our days of living, that we might know life, life in its fullness. And so thank you for this day, this place, this hour, the turning point, not so much the end as the beginning, the time certainly for us to leave behind what will hamper us, encumber us, as that letter to the Hebrews puts it, our sin, our regrets, our hurts, praying you, Lord, to help us to shoulder our burdens, but actually to know that with you our burden will be light, for you will come with us every step of the way. And so we ask for your forgiveness, Lord, to forgive us our sin and to lead us in that path of life, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith, who, enduring the shame, went even to his death on the cross. And him you have exalted on high. We worship you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And now joining with, well, even those first disciples who asked Jesus to teach them how to pray, so we also will pray together, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You know, every time we're together in church, we're learning something of what it means to, to follow Jesus, to be a follower of this, of this person, Jesus of Nazareth, who for all that he lived so, so long ago, has shaped so many people's lives for the better, and has done more than that, actually, has been the Savior. The Savior who leads us not just into life in its fullness now, but life into eternity. I smiled when I was listening to the radio on Friday because Thought for the Day on Friday said, this is the week especially to be celebrating birthdays. And as some of you know, I had my own birthday this week, but it wasn't about me. It was about two people who shared a birthday on Friday, the 4th of February, these two people. And the person on the right, the young woman, her name was Rosa, Rosa Parks. Now, Rosa Parks became rather famous in 1955, quite a long time ago now, really, um, before I was born, <laughs> uh, became famous for sitting on a bus. She sat in a bus in Alabama, but she sat in a seat that, well, at that time in that part of the United States, was meant to be sat on only by white people, and Rosa Parks was black. And it was a remarkably brave thing to do by this young woman. Now, you might think, why is it brave to sit on a seat in a bus? Well, in those days, 
in the United States, it was absolutely the rule that white people sat in one part and black people had to sit in the other part. In fact, Rosa Parks knew that herself because earlier that year, with the very same bus driver, whom, by the way, she knew always carried a gun in his pocket, he had refused to let her come into the bus by the wrong door and had been so aggressive to her, so fiercely hostile, that he had said to her, absolutely, you've got to go in by the other door. Blacks do not come in by this door. And when she turned around rather scared by this bus driver to go in by the other door, by the other door he drove off. Earlier in that same year, 1955, there had been a young woman called Claudette Colvin, who, just like Rosa Parks ended up doing in December, had sat in one of the seats reserved for whites only. And she had been violently forced out. And in the summer of the same year, 1955, a 14-year-old girl, whose name was Emmett Till, also a black girl, had been lynched, killed. To say that Rosa Parks just sat in the bus on a seat is an understatement. It was a remarkably brave thing to do because she could have been very violently attacked. But one thing we know about Rosa Parks, well, actually, we know quite a lot about her. She ended up living quite a long time and telling her story. But for her, her Christian faith gave her her strength. She knew that when she came to church, that she was a child of God. She trusted that Jesus Christ had lived and died for her. And she knew that whatever people might say, whatever people might do, that to live by the truth, to do the right thing, even when it's dangerous and hard, is what we are called to do. And so she took her seat in the bus. And really all kinds of things happened after that. A big movement of protest led by, amongst others, this figure called Martin Luther King Jr., I'm sure many of you know of. So that's a lady on the right, born on the 4th of February. And the other person born on the 4th of February is the man on the left. Now, he was a, a young minister, like what I was once upon a time. But he was in Germany. His name was Dietrich Bonhoeffer. And Dietrich Bonhoeffer was a, a rather fine minister because as he grew up, and in his early years of being a minister, that was the time when Adolf Hitler came to power. And sadly, at that time, there were quite a lot of ministers in the church of his day, in the German church, who thought, you know, Adolf Hitler, I know he's a bit out there, a bit extreme, but he must be a good thing. I mean, we need a strong leader who can lead this country, who can make this country a better place. Adolf Hitler, yeah, he's against the Jews, but oh, who cares about the Jews? And Dietrich Bonhoeffer could not read his Bible and have his Christian faith and square what was happening under Adolf Hitler with that. Violence against the Jews, violence against actually anyone who made trouble for the Nazis. Dietrich Bonhoeffer did his very best to build up a fellowship of pastors, of other ministers, who might be brave enough to take a stand. And again, it called for bravery, for courage. But, you know, one of the things that he finds himself writing about, discipleship, he wrote a very famous book about discipleship, was that he wrote that you know, when we think about the grace of God, when we talk about God loving you, because we always talk, ministers are always saying, God loves you. We have to be very careful 
that we're not talking about or what Dietrich Bonhoeffer called cheap grace. In other words, we can't just say, oh, I forgive that person's sins, that person who was so violent or so horrible or so untruthful or whatever. We can't say, I forgive that if that person is not truly repentant. You cannot have grace that is cheap. Because when we say that God loves you, God loves us, that has always been costly. Jesus found it hugely costly to love as he did. Do you remember what happened to Jesus? All kinds of things went wrong for Jesus. All kinds of horrible people got angry with Jesus. And ever since, all of Jesus' followers have found that to be loving, to be forgiving, to be generous, to be gracious, to be patient, to be kind, well, actually, that's not an easy road. And Dietrich Bonhoeffer, he also learned that. It was far from easy for him. And yet still we remember how powerfully he wrote about costly grace, about how much it cost God to send his son into the world, to die for us, and how you and I, we can't just, as it were, sail through life thinking, oh, everybody's lovely. Everything is just going to be fine. I never need to stand up or sit down in a bus or do anything difficult. Actually, there may be some things that are quite hard that God may need you to do. And yet still, it's the best way. Let's sing a little bit before we hear our reading from the Bible. And uh, if any of the children and young people would like to go out to groups, that would be the, uh, the time to do it. We're going to sing, My Jesus, My Saviour. Lord, there is none like you. All of my days I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. <laughs> read from Luke's Gospel in chapter 9. Luke's Gospel chapter 9 is the bit of the Gospel where Jesus does begin speaking about the, the cost of discipleship, about the need to take up cross, to deny self, to follow. But at the very beginning of, John's, of Luke's Gospel in chapter 9, there is Jesus asking his disciples to go out there. Let's hear the word of God. 
When Jesus had called the twelve together, he gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases, and he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal those who were ill. He told them, Take nothing for the journey, no staff, no bag, no bread, no money, no extra shirt. Whatever house you enter, stay there until you leave that town. If people do not welcome you, leave their town and shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. So they set out and went from village to village, proclaiming the good news and healing people everywhere. Now Herod the Tetrarch heard about all that was going on, and he was perplexed because some were saying that John had been raised from the dead, others that Elijah had appeared, and still others that one of the prophets of long ago had come back to life. But Herod said, I beheaded John. Who then is this I hear such things about? And he tried to see him. May God add to bless his blessing to the reading of his word. Uh, good morning, everybody. <coughs> we have a, everything's been checked. It's okay, but I've, I've got the after effects of a sore throat that's been running through the McKee household this week. So apologies. Hope you can still hear me, but we're, we've all been testing and things were okay. But uh, just a throat, and only some of that was uh, cheering at the end of the rugby yesterday as well. But <laughs> let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> As you can see from the slides, we have got Facebook, then there's Twitter, you could have YouTube, you can even have TikTok. And there is also their Instagram, uh, WhatsApp, various forms of social media or social media platforms. And I think hopefully most of you have, have heard of them and maybe use it yourself. But the idea is on a mobile device or your computer or laptop, whatever it may be, you connect with people through the World Wide Web and you maybe tell them what you get up to, you post pictures, you can catch up with them, you can stay in touch maybe with family that are abroad. But you might not see them face to face, but you certainly are able to have some input in their lives and they may even be your friends, your followers, as it's called. So you're being social, speaking to people, but it's through a medium and that medium would be Twitter or TikTok, etc., through the media, and hence why we get social media. Now, I don't use Facebook, um, but I do enjoy using Twitter, and I find some of the prayers, some of the reflections, some of the thoughts on Twitter very interesting. As we know, there can be bad sides to that, and people who don't use these things properly. But I think generally, Businesses, charities, churches even, are recognizing that having a social media presence is pretty useful in 2022. We can advertise, we can spread our message. Sometimes the old message of a, a poster or putting something in the paper might work, but combined with an online presence, that gives a good mixture. But I read this week, interestingly, in the BBC website, that social media giant Facebook, as I mentioned, had seen from October to December 2021 a drop in its daily users for the first time ever. So I stress this number, it's terrible how many users they've lost, only 1.929 billion, I'll say that again, 1.929 billion people use Facebook each day. And that was a drop in numbers, bear in mind. There was slow growth in the face of competition from other social media outlets. And that meant, and again, incredible here, 147.5 billion, 
was wiped off the company's stock market value. But I dare say the inventor, the founder of Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg, I tend to think he won't be having any sleepless nights about uh, being short of money. Nonetheless, Facebook is still important. And here, as you've read possibly in the magazine at Cairn Lee, we've been trying to build up our presence on social media to make sure that it's as strong as possible. To look out for opportunities to promote our hall and the 2020 project and discern in a hopefully post-pandemic world how we can best serve our community. So all these thoughts came to my mind as I read Luke's Gospel this week. As here, at the beginning of chapter 9, the first instance when Jesus says to the disciples, commands to the disciples, go, go and preach the gospel. He gave them power, he gave them authority to drive out all demons and cure diseases, and he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and heal the sick. Up till now, they'd watched him do it, and throughout Luke's gospel, as we've been following it, They've sought to learn and watch Jesus as he had healed a man with leprosy, as he'd ate with the hated tax collector Levi, yet Jesus invited them to follow him. We've been taught how to see people differently, how to forgive and love our enemies. And last week, to look at the faith of the centurion, who was possibly not the first person you would have thought would follow Jesus. And this is amongst many other wonderful things we've heard from Luke's gospel so far. And the image, I think, does portray quite well as the disciples went out to spread that message. Jesus is telling them to go out now. The very first way of spreading the message. The way and with the means Jesus had. If you like, maybe the very first social media. And maybe even today, as we read the Bible and we come to church and we're recognized as a face that comes to church, we have our own Facebook that we try and proclaim. But I wondered, how would the disciples share this message? Is it a Facebook like? Is it getting somebody to follow them or adding to a WhatsApp group? Would it be a retweet? a Facebook update that they're now on the move and spreading the message? Or would it be that the other people and what they stand for was important? Because as Christ entrusts his disciples in this reading today, he also entrusts us to spread that message. Jesus' power and authority did that. He commanded the disciples, proclaim the kingdom of God, perform the healing. They're of equal importance. They're not of equal importance. You preach, that's paramount, and the healings back up the message. And we carry on that work in 2022. Yes, with social media, but also personally, as we reach out, let people know that we are here and what we stand for. Talk to them, get to know them, be the social with people be the social medium between Jesus' message and the world. And sometimes that can be the most effective way. Because yes, you've got Twitter, yes, there's TikTok, but all of these things have to involve people and the type of people who spread that message. But you also remember perhaps individuals who inspired you by who they were. Was it an elder? I can think of one. Was it a BB leader? Definitely for me. A Sunday school teacher, parents, family, friends, school teacher. But someone who lived a life guided by God, spread the message and brought you to where you are today. We might not feel equipped, and that's understandable in some ways, but we're called to proclaim that good news. And the church is still here despite the 2022 challenges, thanks to God's grace and power and because of the word being spread. 
But then, if we're sent out, surely we need to know how we'll do it. What resources have we got? Somebody might say, I'm not confident in that, or I'm not digitally literate to do that message. So Jesus gives us reassuring words to take nothing for the journey. Don't take your staff, don't take money, don't take an extra shirt. I mean, seriously? What's he expecting of us here? What do we do with nothing? I haven't got a map. I haven't got any inkling of what we need to do. But Jesus sends the disciples, yes, they should take nothing, but God provides for their needs. Think of that too. God providing. Quite a thought. Something that I know you've had to wrestle with and put your faith in God and maybe something that we, we think ourselves, but God's providing is there. To know that that is all we need on this journey. Spread the message. Nothing fancy. Simple life. But God is with us. So our focus maybe shouldn't be on acquiring things. Not in what we don't have. But what we have. And as that brilliant hymn we sang at the start of the service said. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all these things will be added unto you. So the disciples are sent, not with very much, but God's powerful word with them. But then what if this word is not received? As Jesus says, whatever house you enter, stay there until you leave that town. But if folk don't welcome you, you shake your dust off your feet. And we might still see this now. As Peter said, rejection, there can be difficulties. People who might not want to hear the message. And while that's definitely disappointing, we can't let it stop what our job is. It's even been argued that shaking the dust off your feet is in some way symbolic by saying, we've done all we can in this situation and we carry no further responsibility. Jesus in the scriptures was telling his disciples that preach the good news to everyone and great if you do get received well that's what we want but if the message is rejected you're free to walk away with a clear conscience knowing that you've done all you can because the journey is difficult and it might not reach everyone as we want. But we try. And we keep going. Because God's message can reach far and wide. It might be today with our live stream. Reaching people that we, we never thought. Maybe in our local community. Maybe abroad. From anywhere. In some ways we don't know how far our message goes. A tweet might go viral as they say. A good act might gain prominence in the newspapers. But then interestingly, in the gospel reading, it's Herod who heard all about what was going on. None of the twelve went to speak directly to Herod, but somehow that message still got to him. Herod and others were curious. They're asking about who this man Jesus is. What's he about? What does he stand for? And the matter of Jesus' identity, who he is and what he stands for, has been in Luke right from the very beginning. From when the angels at Jesus' birth proclaimed that he was born the Saviour, who is Christ the Lord. But as we know, Herod, with his role in the death of John the Baptist and of Jesus, he's not asking for positive reasons. But I wonder if that question does resonate a bit with us. Who is this man Jesus? We need to show and we need to tell who he is and be clear in our message also. Yes, we come on a Sunday. Yes, we are committed. But I always feel that 
what happens on a Monday is important. It's just as much church, a Tuesday or an organization or how we go about our lives. It should also identify us. Not to act superior or better than anybody else, but to boldly say, even if again it can be difficult, we are Christian. We follow Jesus. We come to church. And this is the good news. Not that we only say, but we act upon and show. Then people will know who Jesus is and who embodies him. Again, the social people together, socially, the social media. Our lives must back up that message and that can be hard again. For the disciples, they were common men whose lives were different because they followed Jesus. When they went, they lived simply. They stayed in homes. But the people could see that their lives were in line with the message that they proclaimed. And if people can see the reality of Jesus in us, they might be more inclined too to hear the great message and the great opportunity that Cairnley gives them. They might join an organization. They might feel that this church, somewhere to be part of and come and see. And while, yes, I know I would be entirely biased, I do firmly believe that some of the best experiences, some of the best fun, the best laughter, the best friends, and inspiration that I have had is by being connected to the church. People absolutely committed in what they do, walking through rain, hail, or shine, the Scottish summer, whatever that may bring, to come to church because that is who they are. Speaking to people, great folk who act out their faith, looking at them in awe of how they spread the gospel message. So if someone asks us, who is this man Jesus? We can say, we can speak the words, we point them to the text, and we also embody that in what we do. We might feel understandably that we have nothing. We might travel very lightly, but we are sent with God's promise behind us. We can get the followers we can get the likes. We are called to spread the gospel. We are called to be the social media. Glory be to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, one God, world without end. Amen. We'll now come to our prayers for others and for the world and of course near the end of the prayer there'll be an opportunity for you to say your own prayers and name your own prayers to God. So let us pray. Loving God, we are called to share the good news. We are sent out to do a job as your followers. And we stand here today because of the people through the years who have spread that good news. Those in the ancient world who spread stories orally. The disciples who traveled lightly but spread the message. To modern inventions like the printing press, Bibles being freely available, the expanse of education, to ordinary folk today with extraordinary gifts who embody and experience your good news. Lord, we know that we don't just spread the news and then our job is done. We know that we are in community with others. We share affinity and kinship and fellowship. So let us not be ashamed of who we are and what we believe, who we represent, let us express our affinity with all the community, whoever they are, and spread the good news. 
around the world. We pray this day for people affected by famine and war. Those whose lives are not as comfortable, but are a daily source of fear and panic. We know there are those who may find life difficult in our own country too. Those affected by loss or grief or pain. Father, be with them this day. Nationally, on this 6th of February, we also give thanks for the service of the Queen, who 70 years to the day since she ascended the throne has given sacrifice and service to this country based on her Christian faith. We think of the, our own church based in Edinburgh and those who work to promote your word more locally, we pray for success for the new presbytery being formed in Forth Valley and Clydesdale as they strive to build a new way of working. And also for your blessing on our Roman Catholic friends, and especially Bishop William Nolan, only this week appointed to lead our friends in Glasgow Archdiocese. And here at Cairn Lee, we pray too for all the congregation, our children and teenagers, our families. And we bring now in communion with you our prayers, named silently, for those who are in special need of your love this day. Lord, we are called to tell the story. We are called to be the church. So from this building to other buildings, to other denominations and other faiths, to people we may meet in the most unlikely of places, hear our prayers and let us be the medium to spread your message to the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, in a late addition to the programme, as they say, uh, David, our session clerk, has a, a nice wee thing to say. David. Thank you. And with your permission, sir. Um, as you all know, there was an event this week, this past Thursday, to which Peter alluded earlier on in the service. And thank you all for spending the time to sign a birthday card for you, sir. So we wish you a happy birthday. And in the normal tradition, Marjorie. Thank you very much indeed. That's very kind of you. Um, just think of the number 39, because that always goes well with 21. <laughs> Thank you, David, also for preaching. Um, uh, I'd just like to uh, underline, uh, sorry, I'm a little bit discombobulated there. Uh, uh, notices just before we finish. Um, things very much uh, just uh, uh, going ahead. Um, I, I, my, I must apologize. I really should have announced last week, um, because it happened just before last weekend, um, the death of Mrs. Margaret Skinner, uh, one of our older members. And, uh, and so I'm very sorry about that. But her funeral is yet to happen. It'll be this coming Wednesday uh, in McLaren's funeral home at 10.15. Uh, 
Uh, otherwise, uh, if you've not got the magazine, do have a look on the website or indeed ask for a hard copy. Um, the Bible study is started up again, and if you can't come in person, it is possible to watch that uh, on our YouTube channel, although not, not live, but just a, a, a sort of summary version after the event, uh, and you're very welcome to do that. Uh, otherwise, I think everything is more or less just as planned, uh, senior citizens and, and, and so on. Uh, the, the youth clan is meeting tonight also uh, uh, for the, uh, one of its uh, fortnightly meetings at 6.30 p.m. So I think I'll just let David finish the service, if that's right. So thank you. Thank you. I did say, or maybe should have mentioned it, called the rank as well, but it just came to mind, uh, Peter and I had our meeting on Wednesday and we were talking about um, various things and Peter said, oh, I'll, be, I'll be in a decade soon. And I thought, well, it must be Peter's birthday soon. So um, I thought, well, I'll, I'll get a, a special a message from somebody Let's just say, let's just call the person Bridget, for argument's sake, um, who I emailed and said, oh yes, it's Peter's birthday tomorrow. So I was very glad that we managed to get it and hope you had a, a really nice birthday, Peter. I mean, it's nice to celebrate that in church. So as we come to the end of our service today, uh, we're going to sing hymn 681, which is Send Out the Gospel, Let It Sound. Um, then I'll do a short blessing, and then we'll go straight into the really upbeat um, song as we part, We Will Walk With God. So we'll sing the hymn, I'll say the blessing, and then we're into We Will Walk With God. So Lord, as we leave this place to go and spread the gospel, may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with each one of us, those whom we love and those we find it difficult to love, this day and forevermore. Amen.